All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined all the way from Salt Lake City in the great state of Utah by Sean Foyer. How are you doing, Sean? I'm so good, John. I'm so excited to be here and, and talk mindset and sales with you. It's a passion of mine and I'm excited to have a good discussion with you today. Absolutely. And Sean is a universal mindset disruptor with 20 years experience, former business coach and now transformative mindset mentor. He focuses on revolutionizing, revolutionizing thinking patterns to foster freedom, abundance, joy and love in life. And who doesn't want that? Uh, and specializing in thinking into results, leadership development and more. Sean offers tailored solutions for financial growth, relationship enhancement, and overall wellness across the U.S. and Canada. And as I said, <laughs> all good things, all good things. And what we're going to talk about today is around mindset and making your life and business better. And a lot of that has to do with, I mean, people hear about mindset all the time. They're saying, uh, uh, you know, you need to develop this mindset, you need to develop that mindset. And it always sounds a lot easier than it actually is because behind the, the inability or maybe the obstacles to changing mindset is a lot of self-limiting beliefs. Um, yes. so, so just uh, give me a kind of a background of how you came to this, Sean, and and, uh, and how you got into this in the first place and the importance of it, because I think it's a, it's a very underserved uh, area. Yes, and, and, and I'm so happy and grateful that it's become my niche to work on mindset. And I spend a lot of time in the United States and Canada with home improvement contractors. So my background, I was actually a business owner. I grew up in a family construction business. Um, I ended up owning it with my father. And in the business, we were part of an organization that taught us process, sales process, um, business planning process, all these amazing processes. And I used them very successfully up to my limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. for a lot for a long time and then i exited the family business i won't bore you with the details of my story but i actually went through a bunch of challenges which made me question my own beliefs but i then went to work for a national training organization called the certified contractors network which i've been a member of for 10 years implemented to the best of my ability their trainings i went to work as a business coach for them for five years i became their lead sales trainer and when i left that organization i had 70 companies i was working with and this is what took me to the path of mindset I had people paying up to seventy and eighty thousand dollars for three-year packages to go get in to get good information, good sell system, one of the best in the industry. Mm -hmm. And what I found was the same problem I had in my business. It only worked to the level of the belief of the business owner or the sales leader that was implementing it. And so I went on this search, on this path for how do we close the gap between what we know we want to do in business and in life. And what we actually do and i found the gap is created in our mind mm -hmm. and where our mind is set and and one thing john i want to share with listeners right off the get-go mindset is one word but it's a combination and what i work with people on is is helping you discover where is your mindset on money mm -hmm. where is your mindset on health and wellness and we have all these pillars of belief and Every set point was programmed into us from other people and other experiences. So literally when I was 41 years old, I went through my, let's call it midlife crisis. And I realized up to that point, I'd done the best I could with really good systems and processes to where I maxed out. And some of us, they're called an unconscious competence, mm -hmm. figure out a way to raise those by having success. But some of us like myself find ourselves stuck and we have to get super intentional on raising our set points. And so my work today is mostly with business owners and sales professionals um, in the home improvement space on helping them raise their mindset. You know, we don't attract what we want. We attract who we are and who we are is our mindset. It's where our mind is set. And I, I you talked about it. It's cliche. Mm -hmm. Fix your mindset, dude. What the hell do you mean fix my <clears throat> mindset? So I take a deep dive and help in making it really simplistic um, and really easy to, to address and to attack your self-limiting mm -hmm. beliefs and your self-limiting mindset. Yeah. So um, I, I, I love what you just said there, because I think that's a really important point that I just want to underline is that idea of you can, you can be successful, right? You can do all of these things. You can use, you know, great methods and processes and everything. But that idea that you eventually are going to hit a ceiling 
of your of a mindset or a self-limiting belief um, ceiling. I think that's a really power, a really, really powerful concept. So, um, what are what are some of the ones that you typically come across? I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure a lot of them are like money and things like that. But where do they, where where do they often come from? So, and this is the the interesting part of it is if you go back, a newborn baby, a newborn child is born with genetic predispositions on what they're going to be, but they don't know what to believe. Mm-hmm. And so if you think about it, every belief and every step point came from your surroundings, your environment. You know, I speak English and I speak it with a Utah dialect a little bit because I was born and raised in Utah. I, I eat the foods I eat even to this day because they were fed to me. And so your limiting beliefs started from the day you were born and even loving, caring parents sometimes programmed their self-limiting beliefs into us. You know, you think about as a reckless, wild child, you get told not to do things because you're going to get hurt and fear and anxiety get instilled in you. Mm. You know, you know, one of the biggest limiting beliefs I see for everybody is scarcity. And it's, it's not enough time. It's not enough money. And then the deep spiritual level, it's not enough of self. Mm. Like I'm not enough. And so, you know, for me, I spent the first 40 years of my life trying to be enough. Not knowing that, not realizing that, you know, at 40 years old, I had, you know, a 10,000 square foot house, a, a very successful home improvement company, a wife, four kids. None of that was enough to raise my internal set point. And so I, you know, went through a process um, where I lost a lot of things. I had to start over. I had to hit my rock bottom. And from there, in the last 10 years, I built everything from the inside out, working on my enoughness, on raising my self-limiting beliefs. But yeah, if you look back, anything that's challenging, your set point on money, the most you've ever made, a lot of sales reps, especially commission, they usually make about Mm -hmm. the same year after year. It's because that's where their mind is set. They'll get a better process, a new exciting product. And a lot of times, unless they have something help them raise their set point, they're going to stay about the same. And That's how powerful they are at holding us in place. That's also how powerful Mm. they can be if we intentionally raise them on our own. Yeah. And obviously one of the things that, uh, that say salespeople in particular, as you would know from uh, doing a lot of sales training is, uh, is obviously you're in a business that's, uh, you know, 90% rejection. Right. And, and, and that can, you know, that's a tough thing, especially for a lot of, uh, say, salespeople who maybe defaulted into becoming salespeople in the first place, maybe don't even want to be salespeople deep down, or they have bought into all the negative stereotypes of salespeople and they're embarrassed by being in. There's a whole, there's a whole, like, load of different things, but there are so many, there are so many triggers in there that, you know, could set you off from, from childhood, from whatever, because it's such a dynamic uh dynamic role well and if you understand i mean how did our self-limiting beliefs get there they got there by space repetition of thought hearing something over and over in our environment or an emotional event and and with salespeople, you've seen the coffee is for closers clip with alec baldwin yeah. and okay so and, and that's old school and i grew up in you know um 80s and 90s i was part of my family business and we had a lot of high pressure salespeople in the home improvement industry that that was their mantra always be closing always be closing and I've adapted that. I call it new age selling. I coach sales professionals that I work with that they have to ABC themselves every single day. And they have to do it on three things. 100% belief in the company they're working for, 100% belief in the products and price. And most importantly, the three that we got to close ourselves, not once a week, not once a month, but every single day, 100% belief in self. And if you think about it, I can get a new rep trained and ready to go and they can have belief in all those areas. And then in my industry, we have about a 30 to 40% closing rate, Mm -hmm. which is a 30 to 40% yes rate. So so run three appointments, you get a no, no, yes, no, no, yes. And if I do that for weeks or months, no, no, yes, I'm getting programmed more negativity than I am positive reinforcement. And that can wear down my belief in myself, my company, and my price and products. And so for me, I have sales professionals every single day get into rituals where they raise it, I call it your positivity shield, and do some affirmations some visualization work on getting themselves into 100% belief that they're going to go out and serve a client with 100% belief in themselves and those three areas. And the more we do that, the better results we see. We don't have to run, it's not about more time. It's not about running more appointments. It's about being more effective on the chances we're giving. And if I get myself, and I call it instead of game ready, like they do in sports psychology, if I get myself sell ready and get my 
mind at a high level of belief, I'm going to have a higher closing percentage and I'm going to get bigger tickets and I'm going to serve my customer better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what's, what's really interesting about that as well is, uh, you know, as you said, is, um, you know, those ABCs that you have for themselves, because oftentimes, uh, you know, I'll get calls and stuff from salespeople or whatever. And from the moment the conversation starts, you can tell either they don't have confidence. They're already expecting the no, they don't yes. have, or they don't believe them, really believe in what they're selling or, or they don't believe in themselves. All of the things that you've talked about conversely, you know, I've, I always tell this story about somebody who came and sold uh, me upgraded air conditioning units. So I have, you know, not very interesting, not very exciting, not something I want to think about. But the guy's knowledge, enthusiasm and everything that he put into that made me actually start to pay attention <laughs> and, yeah. and actually get some knowledge. And, and I mean, and obviously he's the person I bought from. Yeah. And. And, that, and that's what, what it all boils down to. I mean, if I run three appointments and my first two, I get no's and I carry the energy of that no into my third appointment and I'm questioning myself and I'm, I'm going to show up like the first rep you described there, right? Not really. And the customer is going to feel that. Yeah. Where if, I, where if I use the power of my conscious mind to control my subconscious mind and raise my vibration and my energy and my enthusiasm and my belief, excitement's contagious. Mm -hmm. Just like negativity is contagious. Like if I go in, uh, and, the, and the other thing, and I always warn reps when we get in a slump, don't get commission breath, right? If I go and focus on the fact that I need a sell to pay a bill or I need a sell to make, you know, the wife and the family happy, I'm going to go in smelling of that energy. And nobody wants to buy from somebody with commission breath. I can tell the second I meet with somebody if they're authentic and really trying to serve me or if they're trying to sell me. And I always mm -hmm. say it's a reframe for me. Sales equals service. And the more I serve, the more I sell. And I, now that in itself is a mindset. Yeah. And to do that, and obviously, you know, you have to have, uh, you know, you have to be quite grounded within yourself. The other thing I think uh, that often comes up is, like I said, these the idea of triggers, right, and baggage that we carry, and and it can happen to anybody at any time. Suddenly, somebody can look at them some way, and it triggers something from way back, and and it derails, and, and we and we carry a lot of this baggage around with us, so. I think uh, I'm ask, uh, or you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that that shedding baggage is is a, is a really important part of the process too. Hundred percent, and that's where for me personal development is about making myself better, increasing my self and love and confidence. To where you know I have buttons that people could push and trigger, right? But they're my buttons, mm -hmm. and I get to decide who pushes them. And sometimes I get to decide if I even want them to exist anymore. And I've done a lot of work with visualization, with affirmation work to find my weak spots, my buttons, and then to affirm around them. And just the same way that I could program scarcity in by my environment and by being told things about scarcity my entire life, I can reprogram abundance into my thinking with affirmation, with visualization, with then belief. And the more I work on that, I mean, I, I studied a lot under Wayne Dyer for years uh, mm -hmm. up until his passing. And, you know, when, when we're talking about this, he had this thing called the art of being undefendable. And right. literally, you can practice that. I mean, when a customer rejects your price, they're not rejecting you. But if you have some enoughness issues on the inside and they're rejecting your price, you might take it personal. And the second you take it, make it personal, you've just lost the sale because instead of serving them, you're not going to be defending yourself. And mm -hmm. all of this is an inside job. All of this is and, – and really understanding. And you can do some online research. You can Google it. But there's lots of science now to back it. 95% of our daily activity is controlled by our subconscious mind, which is programmed with habits, thoughts, and belief that run automatically. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm consciously trying to be more positive, my subconscious will take me to a negative place without its subconscious, like a submarine, without me having awareness of it. So I spend a lot of time for myself and anybody I work with looking at what are your subconscious programs that are programmed into you, they're part of who you are, that aren't serving you. And most of them came from other people, so they're not true and they're not yours. So why would you let them affect your prosperity? Why would you let them affect your sales results? Yeah, and there's a couple of things there. I just wanted to uh, underline that thing again, what you said about taking things personally, because that is that is a massive challenge uh, for, for a lot of people in, in lots of roles and in life, in sales roles, you know, particularly, as you said, because you get a lot of rejection. But being able to kind of... Um, 
take yourself out of it and 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 if you like remove yourself from and say this isn't this is about the product the price maybe yeah maybe i didn't do the greatest job in selling whatever it's all fine but it's not when you say no to me you're not saying no john you as a person suck <laughs> no you're not and, and even you know we've all had that really good presentation where we get down to the close and for whatever whatever reason we're not able to get it and we set a follow-up and we leave the house and we're like, gosh, I could have done this, I could have done that. And then we go for the follow-up, maybe it's a phone call, maybe it's an email, and we don't get the response. And at some level, we make it about ourselves. And I've trained myself and anybody I work with, the first shot, for the first thought should be from the customer's perspective, what happened on their side, they're not available. And I can't tell you how many times I've reached out with a, hey, I'm not able to get a hold of you, or um, we had this meeting set, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. And and nine times out of ten, you find out that after you left, life happened. They had something yep. else come up, and it had zero to do with you. But the yep. second you make it about you, you just lost the sale, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I'm a hundred percent. Because I mean, a lot of it's about timing. You may call me today. I may have time. I may be interested. Tomorrow, something might happen that I can't follow up. With you. You're the last thing on my mind. But if you're professionally persistent. You know, eventually, you know, I'll, I'll probably come back around when the when the time is right. Because obviously, things don't, as you know, in sales, things don't happen on our time frame. Generally speaking, no. Um, and if they if they had a need, they still have the need. And a lot of yeah. times, you'll find out they had their son reach out and had an emergency, and they had to run to his college to help him with the situation. And it had nothing to do with you. And they're still interested in the product. You just have to create the space to get yourself back in there and, and do your job. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing I just wanted to pick up on is that idea of, you know, these self-limiting beliefs and maybe, you know, negative beliefs we have about ourselves that we attribute to external factors, to other people and that. And the reality is a lot of the things that we think about ourselves that we think other people think about us. Well, we don't even know that they think that because that's just something we made up ourselves because we're great at kind of projecting. And they're actually thinking about themselves, not you most of the time. You know, I would say... <laughs> They're tuned into WYFM, what's in it for me? And that has nothing to do with you and your self limiting beliefs. And so if you think it's about you, you just lost. Like I, yeah. I always talk about, like Wayne Dyer used to also say, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And when I get to a, a home or a sales call, I try and do my best to get in the customer's perspective. And they know they're trying to be sold. And for in-home sales, you've invited a stranger to your house. Yep. That can be a challenging situation. So my job as a sales professional is to get them comfortable with that first from their perspective before I even try to sell them anything. And the more I make it about them and not me, and again, every time you get it in your head and make it about you, if you dive deep and do some thinking and some awareness about it, it's not true, it's not yours, it has nothing to do with you. And the more work you do on you, the better sales professional you become. Yeah. And the, and the interesting thing is uh, when I was uh, you know running a sales consulting company a number of years back, um, you know, a lot of these big, uh, big organizations or big sales teams, and they go, we don't call our salespeople salespeople. Um, we don't want them, you know, they're whatever business development. It's a, it's a dirty word, right? It's a yeah. dirty word. And I used to say, that's fine. I mean, we can, we can customize it to whatever, you know, nomenclature you use, but just let me tell you one thing. Everybody knows they're a salesperson. So you're not actually fooling anybody. You're better off being a very transparent and upfront and you know engaging and servant salesperson than you are pretending that you're not a salesperson. 100%. Even in a lot of the word tracks in, in a good sales process, start out with taking the pressure off. Mm -hmm. We're not going to twist your arm to buy, but I am here to present a product. And if it sounds good, we're going to ask for your business. I mean, my job as a salesperson is to earn your business. And part of that is, is going to include asking for it. Yeah. And I'm not going to be afraid to ask for it. If I do a needs analysis and I find there's a good need and I have a good solution and then I do a really good presentation of showing you how my product can serve your need. Why at the end of it, wouldn't I ask you, you called me, you have a need, I have a solution. I'm serving your need when I sell you. So I'm going to ask for the business, right? Mm -hmm. And the yeah. more I believe in that, the better I do, the more I think, Oh my gosh, I don't want to be a slimy salesperson and think where that came from. You know, if you grew up with, with parents that were professionals that didn't like salespeople, you heard a lot of negative sales talk about, the sway to salesperson or the high pressure, yep. you know, used car salesman get a bad rap. There are some used car salesmen that actually care and actually do a good job, but the mm -hmm. industry as a whole has some paradigms of self limiting beliefs around the intention and sometimes the integrity. And, you know, if you aren't comfortable being a salesperson and that's your job, 
you need some work on the inside to realize you're selling yourself all day long. You sold it to your spouse to get the first date. Yep. You know, when you're trying to get the kids to agree on dinner, you're selling them everything. When you're trying to get the vacation that you want to go on that your spouse doesn't, you're selling the big, we are selling all day, every day. And so the more I position sales as a positive and a service, yeah. the better I'm going to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you're totally in, in aligned. I mean, we believe, you know, that sales people are are um, wealth creators and peace producers because at the end of the day, when salespeople are are selling, then trade is happening. Then, as long as it's a fair exchange, uh, then the world is a better place. It's hard to be in conflict when you are having a fair exchange of goods because, let's face it, if I blow up your house, you're not likely to hire me to rebuild it, are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, when this goes back, and again, I'll come from the home improvement mm -hmm. world. If I'm a right price contractor and I do the right job, I'm going to be a little bit more expensive than the guy working out of the back of his truck. And if I don't do a good job, not only do I not get the business, but I put my consumer at risk of having a bad job, right? And I have that belief. If I don't do my job and they pick a low price that doesn't have the right insurance, the right workers' comp, the proper installation, they might pay for the job twice. Even though it was cheaper than mine, they might end up paying more to get the correct job. So I go in with that belief that I'm here to serve and do my job. I'm going to get a lot better results. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, thanks, Sean. This has been fantastic. All of Sean's information will obviously be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. So um, if you're if you're looking to improve your sales mindset and you want to get, to get better, I have several mastermind groups, um, one for business owners in the home, home improvement space, one for in-home sales professionals. And to work with me, it's a six month initial commitment. And the reason I do that is to change your mindset is going to take some space repetition of thought. So I've got um, a program I created called Inner Blueprint, Remodel Your Mind for Success. It's a 12 module. We go through the modules two times. We meet twice a week, once for a lesson and once for support. And so you're going to take your belief system and you're going to increase it by removing the self-limiting beliefs. And we're going to do it all through proven tools. Um, and I've got a whole list of success stories we can talk about. So to me, success leaves clues. And if you want better results, start mimicking them. And again, the best process in the world is only going to work to the level of your belief. So if you need to raise your belief, I'm your guy. Yeah, fantastic. And like I said, I, you need to take that thing away. Take away from this is that we have that self-limiting beliefs create ceilings. So <laughs> yes. That's, that's so perfect. And, and if you're going to doubt anything, doubt the ceiling. Down yeah. your limitations because they're not real, they're not true, they're not even yours, and the sky's <laughs> the limit. I mean, I've seen it happen in my life, and most of the people I work with, once they break that glass ceiling, now the sky's the limit, and we're like a rocket ship taking off with our abundance. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Sean. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all. Yes, again thanks. Soon. Thanks for having me on. Go sell somebody something and serve them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah.